I'm thinking of a planet like Earth, except it's half the size with no breathable air, it's extremely cold, and it's exposed to high doses of radiation. I'm speaking, of course, about our planetary neighbor, Mars. In our search for a viable alternative planet for human habitation, Mars is the best option so far. But once we get there, will we even be able to survive on Mars? And if we do, for how long? What exactly do we need to be able to do to call Mars home? For all its glorification in science fiction, it is extremely difficult to survive on Mars. In order to survive on the planet, we first need to land on the planet. With only one-third the gravity of Earth and an extremely thin atmosphere, landing on Mars could be pretty difficult. Right now, NASA is able to land a one-ton vehicle on the surface of Mars. For a human to land, it would need to park about 10 tons on the surface. That vehicle would need to land with precision and in a safe place. In other words, an area where there are no mountains, hills, or rocks. If you've ever seen a picture of Mars, you can probably imagine that this is no easy task. This would be made even more difficult by the fact that the rocket will pick up a lot of speed during the descent. Let's say you do land on Mars. Now, you are going to need a stable supply of food. This will be challenging because nothing can grow naturally on the red planet. Your most likely source of nutrition would come in the form of a vegan-based diet of foods that are all grown in greenhouse farms. Now, you might be thinking, why not just bring in food supplies from Earth? As great as this sounds in theory, it would cost an estimated $1 billion per person per year to send food from Earth to Mars. This simply is not practical. So, humans on Mars will need a level of self-sustainability when it comes to food. Suppose you are able to safely land on Mars and you've figured out how to feed yourself. Great job, but you aren't out of trouble yet. Weather on Mars is extreme. Martian temperatures can range anywhere between negative 175 degrees Celsius near the poles to 30 degrees Celsius near the equator, but the average temperature is well below zero. The air is also largely comprised of carbon dioxide, which is good for plants, but bad for people. The surface of Mars might seem similar to Earth, well, at least the parts of Earth that are rocky and rugged, but the planet is an inhospitable world with a barely present atmosphere. Because of this, anyone who lives on Mars will have to be in an airtight structure with airlocks keeping the internal pressure and oxygen at manageable levels. If you want to go outside, you'll be needing a spacesuit that can maintain temperature, pressure, and oxygen levels. Fortunately, there are some pretty cool designs for the spacesuits of the future. Another obvious key for survival on Mars is having a drinkable water supply. The good news is that the Curiosity probe recently discovered that Martian soil has quite a lot of ice in it. About 35 liters per cubic meter to be exact. So, all you'll need to do is scoop it up, heat it, and strain out the impurities. Oh wait, did I mention the dust storms? Because you're going to have to get used to dust storms. About every 26 months, it's summer on Mars, meaning prime dust storm season. These storms, made up of fine dust that gets caught in the atmosphere, can darken daylight to a twilight stage, and they can last for months on end. Let's not forget about the silent killer that will threaten you while you're on Mars and even as you make your trek to the red planet. Radiation. Because of the high levels of radiation on Mars, you'll be at a high risk of developing cancer. Your spacesuit and home are going to need to be able to protect you from the radiation, or all of your other survival measures will have been for nothing. So there you have it. If you're able to somehow make it to Mars, land safely, find a way to keep yourself fed and hydrated, all while avoiding intense radiation and massive sandstorms, you'll be a true, real-life Martian. Are you up for the challenge?